You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I am with Jeff number two, Jeffrey Gargas. How are you, Jeff? <laughs> uh, I'm good. I was actually thinking through that. I'm like, oh, like all the files say Jeff, and then the other one says Jeff. I'm like, which am I? Am I Jeff or am I the other Jeff at this point? You're always the I'm other Jeff, Jeff number two. Yes. I'm always the other Jeff, even because if I'm not our, another Jeff. Our guest for this episode's name is Jeff as well, but he will always be Jeff number one. You'll you'll never talk <sighs> him. Come on. Wow. I mean, it's That's... it's not that you're not cool enough. It's just you're not as cool as him. You know? But I, you know, I'm not going to argue with that. That's 100% true. Uh, so we'll get into that in a minute. Um, you know who's always the number one? Number, the number one in one, your eyes? The, the number one Neil. Oh, number one Neil. <laughs> yes, that is an obvious answer as well. Um, yes, you in the blue shirt. What do you think? It's it's a blue shirt. I'm not in a blue shirt. I know, but I can't see you, so I don't know what shirt you're in. <laughs> I had to look down. Like, wait a minute. No, no, it's definitely red. Um, it, I'm talking about the 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 doctor Neil Gupta. Um, something that we, we thought would be kind of cool is to to highlight a a recent blog post we have out, and this is actually part of a a nine post series. Nine, nine. Yeah, nine yeah posts, I love right? that you made, yeah. you were like, I'm not sure. I'm like, Jeff, go look at the website. There's nine posts on there. It released. Like, <laughs> I would have had to count and that, that. That could just trouble. Yeah. We actually highlighted in a recent episode about we that, did. but I think, you know, I think it's important that we, I like talking about the post because one, we get to highlight the person who wrote it, but also, you know, I'm not sure, you know, if you listen to the podcast, you may or may not be aware of teachbetter.com and like all the, the, the content that's there, the posts that we have coming out, you know, every, every, day pretty much things coming out and the free download and stuff like that so it's fun to highlight this this was a really cool group of nine blogs that were all about coming back better wait and jeff Neil, can i can i call you out before you go into this awesome like i mean i guess go ahead because guess, you're like ahead. oh go check out teachbrighter.com guys we literally publish a a blog a day and he's chose choosing a blog from like a week and a half ago so you're gonna be able to learn in this like beginning about neil gupta's awesome blog but there's probably like 10 since then so go check it out well yeah it's part of nine so i mean yeah. you figure another eight on the same day right so yep. there's at least sure. in between so but uh, thank you. I appreciate. I felt. I think that what you did with it was very necessary for you to call that out. Apparently, so thank you. Important. Yeah. <laughs> so Neil's Neil's blog, part of the planning for the new world blog series, is five design strategies to come back better. Uh, and he touches on. He's utilizing it based on off the the design thinking. So the design thinking like strategy um, and going through so you're, you're talking about engaging you're talking about uh going through let's see so you, you what he goes breaking down i, I didn't want to go out of order because i was thinking of the design process but the way he breaks down is an engaging with empathy defining the needs challenging the process uh ideating for for innovation and then prototype for success so you know when we talk about engaging with empathy we're talking about seeing it from all angles right putting yourself in someone else's position understanding how a decision will be received the way it's going to impact you know your staff, your students, your parents, all those types of things. Uh, you can jump in anytime you want, Ray. Defining the needs is like actually understand what, what are the actual needs, right? Clarifying like what is this, you know, talking with your team, like what are we actually trying to do? What do we actually need in order to meet needs? Uh, my favorite is actually challenging the process. Um, that is, right, you know, just challenging saying, hey, like that, just because it's how we've always done it doesn't mean that's the way it has to be done. Just because someone else does this, does it that way doesn't mean that's the way that I can do it or the only way that we can do it. We need to think through like, what if we did this? Or what it, what might, what, what it would look like if we tried this? Or how might we change it this way, right? So, and then uh, I think one of your favorite words, ideate, right? It so is you my ideate, favorite. <laughs> if you ideate for innovation, is really just thinking through and, and creating ideas um, and, you know, Neil talks about like establishing challenges for your teams to create or co-create um, solutions from. And I think that's such an important part. And then I love, you know, prototype for success is all about um, testing your, your new initiatives, testing your new ideas and, and 
you going through this process and that's where the design thinking process really comes through. Like, you know, you implement, you reflect, you review, you gather feedback and then you redo it, right? You reassess and you get back to it. You change it up again. So, um, this is a really cool blog. I really love that he grabbed sort of the design thinking model and put it into this place, you know, and, and went into it. Neil's such a, just a brilliant educator, uh, personally that, or at least I think that, um, and I love the way he breaks it down. So obviously I just kind of went through a little bit of a summary. He breaks down a little bit further in each one of those. I didn't mean to completely take over that Ray, but you I killed just, it, buddy. I really like this. Book. No. Yeah. I encourage I, you. I, I hope I did. It's okay. I hope I'm allowed to stay. You, you did all right. We'll keep you for now, uh, especially since we still have the rest of the episode that you're going to be involved in. But for everybody sure. else, make sure you go and check out this blog. Like Jeff said, there's so many in this series, but there's also so many that we publish every single day to support all of you with new ideas or um, like a deeper dive into ideas that you're passionate about. So it's a great spot. I do want to give a little challenge to our listeners. If you could pause right now and either go send a tweet or tag us on Instagram, that you're listening to this episode. And I want you to take a guess on why ID8 is my favorite word or one of my favorite words. If you know me well, you'll know why I like that word. <laughs> um, if you know me really, really well, you'll know why I like that word. Uh, but uh, that will just be a fun guessing game. And hey, if you get it right, Jeff is going to send you something free. So I don't know what he's going to send you. No, but I like it. if you can I guess like why that word was a reason for Jeff to make fun of me. You feel free to make sure you share it on social media. Uh, it's no big deal. But now, Jeff, let's talk about the best Jeff, who was the guest on this podcast episode. The real Jeff. Yeah. Real so our, Jeff. our guest, Jeff Prickett. Um, he is a high school principal at McHenry High School and uh, East, Camp East Campus, which is in Illinois, northern Illinois. 27 years. Um, and he's been a principal at, at elementary school, middle school, and now into high school, uh, so much experience and just, and you just hear it when you talk to him. He's also got, we talked about, we didn't even like touch on it until the end of the episode, but I kind of basically, he's got, he has eight kids. I mean, this guy is a, a dad to the, to the T. He's so passionate about what he does. Um, he gets very, I, I think, vulnerable with us and shares so much from his experience and what he's learned. This is a great episode. I'm super excited about it. Uh, we touched, we, we, we touched a little bit on, on both of his podcasts as well and what he's trying to do there. Uh, anything you want to take away? I know you, you've got to have, we, we've got to get connected with Jeff a lot recently. He's in, involved in our administrative mastermind, which is awesome. But I know you've also got to have a lot of, like, uh, or at least several one-on-one -on -one conversations with him recently. You're getting ready to record on his podcast. Anything you want people to focus on when they're listening to Jeff talk and, and things from this episode? You know, there's so many pieces of this episode I know you guys are going to enjoy. My biggest thing is... It, truly, I'm thinking back to everything we talked about. There are so many things we didn't talk about that Jeff is involved in. And I want to make sure that all of you don't just take this opportunity to learn from him right now, but you continue to stay connected to him. He's an incredible administrator who's doing amazing things across the state and not only in Illinois, but, but nationally as well. And I hope that this is an opportunity for you to not only get some tidbits of information, but truly connect with another great educator doing really good work with that with that intention of just trying to share and help people carry that teach better mindset. So above all, make sure you connect. I know I say that every time, but I mean it extra super this time. So just go do it. Extra super. I like it. All right, let's get an episode 195 with Jeff Prickett. We'll be getting right back to this podcast episode, but really quick, I want to give a special shout out to any leaders in schools. If you are a district leader, a school building leader in any capacity, the Teach Better team has a weekly administrative mastermind, which actually welcomes in district leaders from around the world to come together and collaborate. There is no better time than right now to make sure that you are considering all factors and sharing resources with educators around the country and around the world. This is an amazing get together that happens every single Tuesday at two o'clock central, three o'clock Eastern. And if you have any sort of leadership role, consider this your invitation. You can get the private link to make sure that you're part of this weekly get together over at teachbetter.com slash mastermind. All right, leaders, we'll see you there, but let's get back to this episode. All right, we're here and we are chatting with Jeff Prickett. And Jeff, we've been talking a little bit beforehand here and we've been talking, we've, we've kind of got, I don't know when we originally got connected with you, but you've been kind of in our world and our family here for a while. Yeah. Um, and super excited to have you on this on the, on the podcast and chat with you, learn more about you, dive into your story a little bit. But before we get too far into that, man, how are you feeling right now? 
Uh, you know what? I'm feeling good. I'm I'm a little I'm a little tired, but I mean I'm sure all of us are as we you know get ready to open schools back up. And uh, uh, I'm super excited though, super pumped to be here, and uh, it's a great great way to end my day. Oh, Jeff, we're so happy that you're here. And yeah, you've been in the family, the Teach Better family for a while now, but mm. I just have loved learning about you and your new podcast and everything else. I know we're going to get into all of that. Before we kind of go into all of the things, would you mind just sharing with our listeners a little bit about yourself, kind of answering that typical question of what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I usually um, say, you know, like th that, that I'm a dad first, a dad and a husband, um, and, and then a leader. And, uh, I always like to throw in there doctor too, because I think it's really cute. You know, since I got my doctorate a couple of years ago, my kids call me Dr. P my own kids, like not my school kids. <laughs> so, so when I walk in the door, they're like, Dr. P's home, Dr. P's home. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And my wife's like, you paid them to say that, didn't you? That is awesome. <laughs> so, That's so, so awesome. Oh, it's so funny. But I'm a high school principal here in, in McHenry, Illinois, Northern Illinois. We're about uh, maybe 20 minutes south of the Wisconsin border. And, um, you know, I've been in education for tw uh, 27 years now. Uh, most of those as an administrator, I've, I've been an elementary principal, middle school principal, and now currently high school principal in that order, not on purpose. So Jeff, that's a pretty impressive uh, career. A lot of different uh, positions held, 27 years. That's a lot of experience. So yeah. I'm excited to hear where you might take this one. So one of the things we love is, is, is sharing stories of failure and overcoming that failure and what we learned. So can you can you take us to the time that you've had a, a failure or struggle that you've had overcome and kind of take us there with you? What happened? How did you overcome that? And then what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, that that's re that's really a great question. I mean, I've I've had a lot of them, Jeff. I've had a lot of <laughs> a lot of failures. Um, you know, twenty seven years. I mean, I, I did mention most of those as an administrator and and um, a number of them as a teacher as well. I taught eighth grade um, government and and reading at the time, and uh, I also had a, a few years in elementary school as well, teaching uh, at the sixth grade level. But I think you know, I think my failures, you know, came mostly as an administrator who I, I was never one to think that I that I knew it all. You know, some hotshot young administrator. Um, first of all, I don't think I was very young when I went into administration. I, well, I guess I was in my mid thirties or so, but um, I did not think I knew it all. And, and in fact, I, I did not hardly know anything at all. I was working as an assistant principal at the time at a middle school um, when I just started interviewing and felt ready to make the jump to the principalship. And, and lo and behold, got an offer for uh, elementary principal. And I took it and I stayed in that district for 10 years. And it was while I was there that um, across town in the same district was a middle school who experienced just tumultuous years. I mean, I mean, I can't even tell you how many building principals they had over 20 years. I mean, it was something like almost one a year, like 20 for 20 years. It was crazy. And I had um, been in the district at the time for about eight years, and I went to my superintendent and I said, y you know what, how about, how about I go over there and take a shot at, at being the, the principal over there, you know, hopefully provide the school with some consistency and, um, you know, hopefully we can, you know, make some good progress there. Um, and, and she said, yes. And I was like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute, what it just happened here? I, I didn't, I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe I didn't think that she would say um, yes, but, uh, but she did. Um, and I lasted two years. <laughs> that, that was it. And uh, I, I, I felt like after that time, after two years there, it was time for me to move on. I mean, that, that was a huge failure to me because I thought that I could handle it. Yeah, and I and I feel like I, th I think I let that success as an elementary school principal uh, maybe go to my head and feel like, oh, yeah, after eight years, I've got this. You know, we turned the school around by the time I left. Um, if you remember AYP, I'm sure you do adequate yearly progress. We were the only elementary school in the district who was making AYP in every area at the time. Um, and, and I didn't listen to the community, the middle school community, when I got there. I didn't listen to them. Um, I thought I knew better. Uh, and I was wrong. I was dead wrong. 
And um, I, I learned a lot from that. You know, I learned a lot from that. And I've grown uh, tremendously since then. I've, I've been in, uh, I've led two schools since then, another middle school and now the high school. Um, and I just learned to listen to my people and to he- really hear them, what they, what they need and, and then take action on that. So they know that you, you know, they really, really feel like you were absolutely listening. So that was a hard lesson to learn though. Mm, but important lesson. I mean, listening just is, is such a, it's, it's actually a lot harder than it sounds, but it's such a crucial part of, of being a leader and, and being a leader community in a school and your staff and the students. So uh, great story there. Let's, let's flip it now. Let's talk about a successful moment and this could be something big or something small, but tell us what happened. Why was it a success for you? And then what'd you take away from that? Mm. You know what, isn't it funny? Like I always think that, um, you, you know, it's so much easier to talk about your failures than your successes. And so <laughs> it's just, it never, it never fails to, um, amaze me. But I think that, um, one of my biggest successes was back at that elementary school. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, I mean, come to think of it, it was exactly the opposite of trying to run that middle school for the first time. I really, after spending eight years there, I knew those people. I knew those teachers. I still keep in touch with many of them. I knew those kids and their families. I, w- I went into their homes as, as an elementary principal. Um, they made me, uh, food on my birthday every year and brought it to me at the school. I mean, who, you know, I was living like a king there, right? They treated me like that, but I listened to them and, and I felt like, um, like they respected me because I respected, I respected them and where they were coming from. And so, um, what I learned from that community after spending eight years at the helm there was that, uh, what they were really telling me was that they, it was, it was mainly a a Hispanic community. We were about 75% Mexican American, many of, um, many of them immigrants and, um, in going into their homes and listening to what they really wanted for their kids, it was to learn English. It was to, um, get their GEDs so that they could help their kids at home. It was to, um, build a community garden so that they could grow their own food like they did back in their home country, in their hometowns, in their home cities. They, they were farmers and there was no place for them to farm. Well, guess what? We had a, we had a field in the back of the school and we, we, through the help of a couple of community organizations right there in the village, um, we created a community garden. Where they grew their own food, and in August, when it came time to harvest, we set up a, a, a farmer's market, and they sold it right in the lot of our of our school. At the same time, you know, the school was, you know, the school building sits, especially elementary, used to sit empty uh, at night, and so we partnered with a local community college um, and a family resource center, and brought in tutors and taught the adults computer classes. English classes, uh, working towards their GED. It, it was incredible. It was incredible. It was probably the biggest um, success story of my professional career. Oh, gosh, that's a great success. I feel like that one got me. That's that's a huge thing to celebrate and a massive accomplishment. And I'm so confident you have even more stories like that, but that one was perfect to share as a success. So many good moments in that. It's uh, just, when it-, it was just beautiful. Yeah, thank you. No, truly. Absolutely. You know, when it comes to the work you've done, the work you're doing, I feel like even when you kind of shared in your intro, you didn't even touch on all of the things, right? All of the ways that you're involved in education, the things that you're doing to support teachers. And truly, I see you everywhere now. I mean, even since we've connected, I just feel like you are in all these different pockets. and, And I love, you know, walking into a new situation being like, oh, Jeff's involved in this too. It's just so cool to see. So When it comes to the work you're doing, though, what's keeping you excited about education and what Mm. you do? Yeah, that's good, Ray. I mean, um, 
so true though. I mean, since being involved, uh, you know, with, with the, the, the teach better team, mostly, you know, a lot of it, honestly, from afar, because, because you know, being an administrator, I, I didn't know, um, how I could be involved with you guys. And I'm so glad that, you know, I'm, you know, just taking part in the administrator mastermind lately and, um, just in other, in other avenues. But, I, but to, to, to answer your question, I, I really feel like, um, Gosh, I'm so excited about the, the, about leading right now and the engagement that I have seen and experienced on Twitter and Facebook. I'm in a couple of different Facebook groups. Um, my professional learning network, my PLN, has grown so vastly, especially this summer on Twitter. Um, I'm in a couple of different Voxer groups right now with people just really pouring into people and, and allowing them to, to fill me up as well. Um, I'm excited about the innovation and the creativity that I'm seeing people just being so, so creative. And if, if there's one thing that has come out of this pandemic, and I don't mean to minimize the pandemic at all because it's devastating, but it is creativity. People are just thinking outside the box because, you know, sure, because they have to, right? But, but at the same time, they don't have to. You know, I look at uh, Asel Ruvacaba on uh, the principal of Rio Hondo High School in Texas and the, the summer series of virtual speakers that he's doing and how many people he's reached in just two years as, as principal there. Um, it, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. You know, I'm a, I'm a big baseball fan too. And, and, um, I, I looked at, I was watching opening weekend and I'm a huge, huge Cubs fan and watching on TV, the, the, the game where they had the audience chatter in the background. If you closed your eyes, you would think that you were at the game. And I thought, wow, what a great connection to education. Like we have to think about the student experience right now because even organizations like major league baseball are thinking about the fan experience how can we get people knocking down the doors waiting and wanting to come back every single day right just innovation i'm so excited about it oh you're so spot on about that what a great example of you know if other organizations can change if baseball can change if restaurants can change if everyone's adapting to fit the current times education needs to be right there with them right we have to find ways to be better and move out of survival mode and into, you know, move from being reactive to being proactive. It's so important. And I, that was a perfect example of how people continue to do it and how we have to continue to do it this August. Absolutely. I mean, you can be, you can, you can sit around and get down about it. And, and I was there, believe me, I was there in May, about May, we'd been shut down since the middle of March in about May. I was, I was seriously feeling really down. Um, and you can continue to do that, or you can reach out to people and 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 get involved and join. And and uh, I've I've felt a new sense of just invigoration. It's That's awesome. So Absolutely. So Jeff, I always like to ask principals this specifically. So I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but uh-huh. welcome to Teach Better Talk. But yeah, um, question it. five <laughs> always has to do with advice, and I think advice is so tricky, especially now. Right? There's so many things you can give like, advice about. But if you had to pick one piece of advice, and I know we usually talk about new teachers, I think this could apply to all teachers. What piece of advice would you give any educator right now? Wow. Any educator. Well, you know, my daughter is hoping to be a first year teacher this year. She just graduated from UW um, Whitewater up in Wisconsin. And and, uh, so in talking with her and just any educator right now is to really step into and lean into people and and trust them, right? That's the only way to grow your your PLN, your professional learning network. And, And if you don't realize the importance of that, it is just huge. Get involved with other like minded educators. There are so many people out there because if you don't, you, it can be it can be toxic. It can be toxic. You can feel like you're in it uh, on your own, and you're really not. Um, there are so many people, whether they're fellow teachers, whether they're um, administrators at the building or district level. That's another thing I've found, especially this summer for some reason, probably because of this pandemic. Just reaching out to people across the country who are at different levels of their career, whether it be you know anywhere from teacher all the way up through superintendent. Um, 
at the public or college level, private school, uh, people are just wanting to be uh, involved and, and get to know others, you know, virtually even, which is all we have right now. So um, that, it's a human endeavor, you know, I mean, just just get involved and get connected. And even if you don't feel like it, I mean, take a risk, get involved in a Twitter chat. Um, lurk around for a while, but then post a, post, a, <laughs> post a comment, you know, post a, post a, get in a chat and post an answer to a question. You'd be surprised how many people respond to you. It's amazing. Uh, I love it. Great advice. Get connected, lean into people, build a PLN. It's so important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love it. And that's why we're here. That's why you connected with us, right? I mean, we got connected that way. Absolutely. So that, that I, I love why. it. It's so powerful. Uh, and so important, even even more so right now, I think, with, with everything going on. So really great advice. Appreciate that a lot. Let's, yeah. uh, let's have some fun here. The next six questions we're going to do when your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready Ooh, to go? Yeah, I think I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. What is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Wow. Uh, just one? I mean, there are there are so many. Does Canva count as an ed tech tool? I don't know. I, it I, I feel, does. Uh, Okay, you can throw good. it in as a okay. bonus if you'd like. I feel like it should. Either that or, or the presentation tool Nearpod. I just discovered okay. that within the last year and a half. I mean, those those two I, I use constantly for various things. Great. What uh, what book are you reading right now? Well, I'm reading two right now. I, I have a stack of 20 on, on my nightstand, and my wife is ready to kill me. Um, but I'm, <laughs> I, I am right now reading Ibram Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist. Um, and for a fiction book, I'm reading a young adult novel uh, called Internment by Samira Ahmed. Nice. Wait, uh, if who you should a, follow? Wait, Jeff, I got to know. If you have a stack of Go a ahead. ton of other books, do you have like, oh. do you know what the next one's going to be? Like, is that hard to pick what the next book is? It, it's so hard because here's what I do. I, I, I have the stack of 20 and I read through um, like the first two pages of about 10 of them before I decide which one is going to be my next one. And so the, if I have to pick, a, a, I, I can't even do it. I'm a huge Stephen King fan also, like fiction. Um, if I have to go with fiction route, he's I have almost every first cop first uh first edition of his um but probably the leadership challenge right now kuzis and posner um i know it's a little older but the leadership challenge still holds to be true for most people i know that's more than 15 seconds it's your if fault, i can right? make a rec it's right it's false cool if i can make a recommendation uh get a sticky pad out and write teachers deserve it and just stick it somewhere in that pile oh, too. Hey. so that when it gets to your house oh, you have hey. that it's, no, it's, it's on pre order no, it's on pre-order. It's already pre-ordered? Not, okay. Did you it, not, I, I tweeted about it. Adam I, I and, saw I, I knew you pre-ordered it. I saw it. I knew it was going I did way. pre-order it. And my sticker's on the way, too. Adam sent the sticker. Oh, look at me. that. Uh, it's on the Man. way. Teachers deserve it. If you haven't ordered it, please do, people. <laughs> look at I that. love it. All right. All right. We're going to get back on since Ray threw us completely out of whack there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can still get the let's... trophy. It's fun. Let him go. It's good. Let's it was it. well uh, worth it. You talked about getting connected. So who do we need to follow on social media today? You can give us uh, up to three, which I, I know is hard. It, no, it is hard, but I've got three. I've got three already in mind. Uh, there are people I connect with, um, some more than others. But I already mentioned Asael Ruvacaba, uh, principal at Rio Hondo High School down in Texas. You've got to connect with this guy. Um, he just did a podcast episode uh, on Derek McCoy's podcast, Revolt LAP, Revolt Like a Pirate. Um, so you got to check him out. Uh, Tara Desiderio, she was just a recent guest on at, at, for his for summer virtual learning series. It's, she was incredible. And my guy, Basil Marin. Um, if you, if you, if you want to learn some truth, you have to follow Basil and just the most gracious, humble dude I've ever met. And, uh, well, not met in person, but someday we're going to hook up for sure. <laughs> he was a recent guest on my podcast. So, uh, as well. And he was, uh, just phenomenal speaking some real truth. Uh, give us a good YouTube channel or website for educators. Whoo. YouTube channel or website, you know, I just stumbled upon uh, Small Bites by Hedrick Nichols. I don't know if mm. you know you know her. Um, yes. So she she it was, she's phenomenal, um, and uh, I can't get enough, and I can't wait for her to churn out more episodes. Give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Journaling. Uh, I mean, it's the it's the number one thing. I mean, it, it almost sounds cliche, like oh yeah, journal. Oh yeah, I'm gonna reflect some more. But you know, it, it's the, it can't be any more true. It's it's just so true. If you can't find 15 to 30 minutes a day, whether it be morning, start your day with that routine, or end your day with that routine, or hey, 
Do them both. Bookend your day with thinking about it and get into some deep reflection and journal about it. I mean, that, that's what we need to do as educators. Keep ourselves checked and balanced. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, this one is tough for me, and um, I, I think I, I, I finally learned it. Not, you know, I'm going to be 50 years old this year, um, and in e even us, you know, dare I say, middle-aged guys um, can learn at some point to just be you. That that you are good enough, and and it was my wife who keeps telling me that, like, hey, Jeff, just just be you. You're good enough. You don't need to be anybody else but you. Follow your heart. Be you. It's true, and it's and it's very true. I I agree with her, Jeff. Uh, awesome, knocked it out. What do you think, Ray? Did well? Oh, he did so well. Definitely Teach Better Talk trophy worthy. Come on, he, hey. he had it in the bag before he even started. Let's be let's be real. <laughs> hey, there's before there trophies. Oh, there are absolutely oh, trophies. Covered. Okay, that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Uh, before we go, Ray, I know you're going to have him share how to connect, but I wanted to ask real quick, because I meant to ask earlier and we got going and I, and I didn't. So Jeff, can you take a minute um, for us here? I know you have a podcast and I'm pre it's pretty, it's fairly new. It is. Can you share uh, po like the name, what it's about, how long it's been out? Uh, just kind of give us the, uh, the quick rundown that, of your podcast. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I, I actually have two and they're both fairly new. Um, both run with different people. One's been around a little bit longer with my friend Adam DeWitt. Uh, he's a he's a school administrator up in Ocompa, Wisconsin, behind the Cheddar Curtain, as he likes to call it. Um, it is called the Principal Leadership Lab, and you can find it anywhere you listen to to podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, iTunes. The Principal Leadership Lab. Um, it and you mentioned it's fairly new. It is. We just recorded our fourth episode. Um, a couple weeks ago, we put out the social justice episode with uh, Mark Kenya Williams and Basil Moran and Marcus Berlin, um, principal out here in Huntley, Illinois. Um, and we just recorded episode number four. And then the second podcast that I've got to mention is uh, No Justice, No Peace, Uncut, uh, where Mark Kenya Williams, a good friend of mine, and I get, get into um, all issues revolving around uh, this race issue here in in the united states and so we just recorded episode number two so i hope people get a listen give a listen to that and as well and and um hopefully they like it so jeff you are doing so much you there's no way you sleep there's no way <laughs> you just named off like oh oh and i just do this on the side this incredible thing oh and by the way here's another thing i do on the side like Oh my you know, goodness! You know what? And uh, and 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 I've I've raised eight kids. Well, we're in the process of you know raising four. Is it so we need to touch yeah. on that. The fact that like forget about if he wasn't doing any of this stuff, he still wouldn't be sleeping. He's got to be no, no. You know what? You, you've got to have a a, a solid um, solid um, support there. My wife is a rock, and um, you know it, it's just. But but I feel so strongly about, especially lately. You know, connecting with you guys more. Um, getting involved in, in uh, social media more in my, my professional learning network. I, I feel like, you know, and I, and I mentioned, and don't make fun of it, that I'm going to be almost 50 years old. Um, I just feel like it's time, you know, if you, if you, at some point I felt like, wow, there's so much more I could be giving back to the education community, right? I mean, 27 years um, and I've learned from some really bad leaders, um, but I feel like I've learned what not to do. And so I feel, I'm sure I've got something to give, you know, I'm sure I've got something that somebody's going to learn from. I hope. Absolutely. You do. I have zero doubt about that. I've learned a ton and I hope that all of our listeners stay connected to you because like you said, everybody should be connected, especially during this time. You have so much to share. Others have so much to share. It's so important would you mind telling our listeners actually how they can stay connected? How can they find you on Twitter, Instagram, kind of all that stuff? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Uh, I, pretty easy on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my, my Twitter and Instagram handles are uh, JD, at J.D. Prickett, P-R-I-C-K-E-T-T, -T, two T's at the end. And then my Facebook page is, uh, is open as well, and that's uh, Jeffrey Prickett. Uh, they can find me, find me any of those three places or, and men and the podcast. I mean, come on, make sure you check those out, but I, I, I'd be happy to connect with people. A absolutely. And you know, you can find all the links, all the resources, everything we talked about in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as all those links to connect with Jeff, keep the conversations going, subscribe to both of the, the podcast and get more connected with him. So make sure you head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. 
Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and a review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them. Jeff, this was awesome, man. It's been so great having you in our world, in our family, getting to know you more and more. Now to just be able to to talk with you more tonight and share your story out, just it, it's just great. Uh, it's an honor, a privilege. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on, man. Jeff and Ray, this has been a, an absolute pleasure. Pleasure. I'm so happy to uh, have been able to join you tonight uh, here, uh, and I, I, I've loved it. I can't wait to share this episode with people. And until next time, let's get out there. Let's teach better. <laughs> Thank you.